the concept of the electric car is frequently misinterpreted by the general public. Elon Musk, General Motors, Toyota, or even Nikola Tesla did not initially come up with the idea despite the widespread notion to the contrary. The true golden age of electric vehicles began a very long time before any of us were born. At this point in time, we are experiencing more of a resurgence or renaissance of the electric car. It is interesting to note that electric vehicles EVs, were originally invented prior to the development of internal combustion engines fueled by gasoline. During a certain time period, electric automobiles were the favored means of transportation for a variety of functions including milk delivery, ambulances, and even for the wealthy elite. In order to trace the roots of the electric automobile, we need to travel back in time to the early 1800s. At that time, breakthroughs in battery and motor technology made it possible for early automotive engineers to develop basic prototypes of self-propelled carriages. On the other hand, the precise identity of the person who actually invented the electric car is still a material point of contention. There are a number of early inventors from both Europe and the United States who are responsible for the genuine roots of the electric car. In the vicinity of the year 1832, the Scottish inventor Robert Anderson is frequently credited with developing the first prototype of an electric horse carriage machine. The crude oil was used to generate electricity through the use of a single-use battery that he built. The fact that this prototype had a disposable battery and a limited range rendered it unsuitable for transportation, despite the fact that it was particularly amazing for its time. In 1837, another Scottish engineer named Robert Davidson was the one who came up with the idea for the first electric locomotive. In spite of the fact that it could travel 1.5 miles at 4 miles per hour while pulling 6 tons, his prototype required the battery to be replaced after each journey. Because the railway workers found this innovation to be so uncomfortable, they decided to destroy it as a form of protest. Through his work as a blacksmith in Vermont, Thomas Davenport became a pioneer in the creation of electric motors. He used the first commercially viable motor powered by electromagnets, which he built in 1835 to push a miniature car around an electric railway track. He accomplished this feat by using the motor. However, just like the other early prototypes, Davenport's automobile was plagued by the same problem. The batteries required regular replacement, which rendered it neither practical nor economically viable. It wasn't until the 1860s that the French physicist Gaston Planté built the world's first rechargeable battery. This was the moment when the electric car became more viable. This sort of battery, which is still commonly used in automobiles today, was developed using lead acid chemistry. Despite this advancement, the first electric car that was considered to be viable did not come until the year 1887. William Morrison, a Scottish immigrant and scientist who lived in Des Moines, Iowa, developed a vehicle that was modeled after a horse-drawn carriage to make it more efficient. He modified it so that it couldn't run on 24 of the new rechargeable batteries, which enabled it to transport up to 12 passengers at a maximum speed of 20 miles per hour and required recharging every 50 miles. The horseless carriage that Morrison had was not even close to being ideal. It had problems with both steering and braking. On the other hand, it received a great deal of attention and was chosen to be displayed at the Chicago World's Fair in the year 1893. Steam, gasoline, and electric automobiles were the three primary types of automobiles that were available on the market at the beginning of the 20th century. This was a time when the Industrial Revolution was at its height. By 1900, steam-powered vehicles controlled 40% of the market share, while electric automobiles held 38% and internal combustion engines held 22%. As a result of their lengthy startup times and ongoing requirement for water, steam-powered automobiles began to see a downturn. In the meantime, electric automobiles gain appeal among people who live in metropolitan areas due to the fact that they are elegant, operate quietly, and are simple to use. In a series of races that took place in 1896, the Electrobat, which was an electric car, even outperformed cars that were powered by gasoline. Electric taxes were prevalent in cities such as New York by the year 1900 and battery swapping facilities helped to alleviate the lengthy amount of time required for the vehicles to recharge. In 1901, William McKinley became the first president of the United States to travel in an electric automobile. A year later, in 1902, Theodore Roosevelt became the second president to ride in a Columbia electric car under public scrutiny. In addition, Thomas Edison was the owner of an electric car, and he even worked with Henry Ford on the development of a prototype for an electric vehicle before Ford made the decision to concentrate on gasoline engines. In the middle of the 1910s, electric cars were given a boost by Edison's nickel-iron batteries, which offered a greater range and faster recharge capacity than standard batteries. On the other hand, the electric motor itself was another factor that contributed to the decline of electric cars. Cadillac was the first company to produce a gasoline engine that featured an electric starter in 1912. This did away with the requirement of manually turning the engine. 
This innovation, in conjunction with the widespread use of the muffler, contributed to the refinement and appeal of automobiles that were fueled by gasoline. Additionally, by the early 1920s, the price of Ford's Model T had decreased to approximately $300, while the cost of electric automobiles continued to rise. The decline in the price of gasoline that occurred after World War I and the finding of oil in Texas further solidified the position of internal combustion engines as the dominant form of transportation in comparison to electric vehicles. The development of the electric car has been an exceptionally intriguing journey, one that has been intricately entwined with the progression of technology and the requirements of society. At the beginning of the 20th century, electric vehicles initially gained popularity because they provided a cleaner and quieter alternative to automobiles that were fueled by gasoline. The mass manufacturing of the Ford Model T, in conjunction with the effectiveness of Henry Ford's assembly line, resulted in gasoline becoming the predominant fuel source. This was especially true taking into consideration the fact that electricity was not yet widely available beyond the confines of the city. However, electric automobiles did not completely disappear from the market. The low-speed, short-range applications that they found niche uses in, particularly in urban areas, were particularly useful. As an illustration, the United Kingdom kept a fleet of electric milk vans for the purpose of home delivery into the 1980s when it was still in operation. A similar phenomenon occurred in Japan after World War II, when there was a shortage of gasoline and oil, which led to the production of electric vehicles. Major automobile manufacturers occasionally conducted experiments with prototypes of electric cars. These experiments were frequently conducted to show the difficulties associated with the production of a zero-emissions vehicle that was both practical and economical. Among the most noteworthy examples is the Electrovair, which was derived from the Chevrolet Corvair of 1966. In order to achieve the same level of performance as its gasoline-powered cousin, this automobile utilized cutting-edge silver-zinc batteries to power an AC induction motor that produced 115 horsepower. The car, on the other hand, had a number of severe problems, including the fact that the batteries contributed 800 pounds to the vehicle's weight, which restricted its maximum speed to 80 miles per hour and its range to 30 to 80 miles. To add insult to injury, the battery pack alone cost an astounding $160,000 in 1966 money. This history bears a striking resemblance to the difficulties that contemporary electric vehicles are confronted with. Even though history does not always repeat itself, it frequently echoes ideas that are already well known. Thankfully, the rebirth of electric automobiles that is taking place today is moving along more easily, thanks to technological improvements that are addressing the challenges that were previously encountered. The electric car has the potential to become the most convenient, efficient, and cost-effective option in the automotive industry due to the ongoing development of technology. It has the potential to dominate the landscape of the automotive industry in this century. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.